Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can display desktop notifications to a user via the notifications API using JavaScript running in the browser. So as an example, if I refresh the page here, a new notification will be generated by JavaScript. And if I reduce the size of the browser window, you see that this is truly a system level notification. It's been triggered by JavaScript but the notification itself exists outside of the browser. So I'll show you how to create one now. So the first thing that we're going to be doing in JavaScript is checking whether a user's browser supports the notifications API. So although there is widespread support for it in modern browsers, there are a couple of exceptions here, Safari on iOS and WebView Android. And it's also a good idea to check for the sake of backwards compatibility. So in JavaScript, to determine whether a user's browser supports the notifications API, you can check for the existence of the notification property on the global window objects. You can test for that using the in operator. So if the notifications API is supported, then I'll log a message to the console saying notifications supported. Otherwise, we'll log an error message to the console saying notifications not supported. So as you saw a few moments ago, my browser is capable of sending notifications. So when I run this code, I get the notifications supported message. So if a user's browser does not support notifications, then unfortunately there's nothing more you can do. You cannot send notifications to that user, but in the majority of cases, it will be supported. And if it is, then the next step is to check for permission because in order to send a user notifications, they have to grant you permission first. So browsers include this check because notifications can be quite intrusive and also to prevent spamming. So the first thing to check here is whether a user actually already gave you permission to send them notifications in a previous session because that will probably be remembered by the browser. So to check that, you can check the permission property on the native notification object. And if that has a value of granted, then that means that you already have permission to send notifications, in which case we're going to run a function here, which will be defining below called notify. And we're going to use that to send notifications to the user. Otherwise, we're going to be asking the user for permission to send them notifications. So you can do that by calling this request permission function on the notification object. So this returns a promise object, which you can handle by chaining a then onto the end of it. And inside a function you define there, you will have the result available as a parameter inside that function. So I'll call that res. So res can take on one of three possible values here. The first is granted. So we saw that before, that means the user has granted you permission to send notifications in which case we're going to be calling the notify function. Another possibility is that a user rejects your request for access. So in this case, the value of res is going to be denied. So in this case, you are not going to be able to send notifications to the user. So I'll just log a message here, notifications access denied. So if the user has denied you access, then you should know that the browser it's unlikely to ask the user again in the near future if you can send notifications again. The final value that res could be is default. So this means that the user did not respond to the request for permissions. So inside the console log, I'll say that notifications permission not given. So until a user does actually grant access, if they do at all, then it's going to perform like denied. You won't be able to send notifications but the difference between default and denied is with default browser is more likely to ask the user again for permission to send notifications because they haven't given a firm no. Okay, so now we're covering all possible outcomes in terms of whether a user's browser supports the notifications API or not, and also whether we have been given permission to send the user notifications. So what I'm going to do now is to define the notify function which will be called if the user's browser supports it and also if they've given us permission. 
so to notify the user with a simple message the syntax is quite straightforward you create a new instance of the notification object using the new operator before it and then you just pass in your message so i'll just say hello here so if i save a new notification has been generated and that's because i'm running live server for vs code so every time i save the browser is being automatically refreshed so if you're not running live server then you need to refresh manually to get that result so this worked because i've already given permission to local hosts to display notifications so what i'll do is go into my notification settings and reset permission here so if a user hasn't given permission this is what it will look like I need to reload to see that so the user gets a choice to allow or block notifications if block is selected then the message we wrote earlier is logged to the console and if i refresh the page you see that we're not being asked again because the user has given a hard no i'll reset permission again here and reload so we're being asked again now and if i refresh because we haven't given an answer it's asking me again and again whether i want to give permission so if i click allow now you see that we are being notified with the simple message that we just created now usually you want to notify the user with something a bit more than just a simple message so what you can do to add to this simple notification is to add an options object in the second position where you specify properties to add content to the notification so one that you might want to include here is body so i'm using backticks here to prevent any unwanted escapes in the body string so let's recreate the notification you saw at the beginning of this tutorial so the header was new js tip and the body was then how to use the notifications api so if i save this now a new notification is generated and you can see that it now includes the body text now to include an image on the left hand side of the notification you set an icon property to the location of the image that you want to use so in this case i'm using logo.jpg which is in the same folder as index.html so i simply say dot forward slash in the same folder logo.jpg so it doesn't necessarily have to be a local image this could be a url to an external image so i'll save this now so we can see the state of the notification so you see now there's an image included on the left hand side now body and icon these are the two main properties that are set when creating a new notification there are additional properties that you can set all kinds of funky stuff the issue is that they either don't have very widespread browser support or they are very niche so for example you can add a vibrate property here and then set a vibration pattern so i'll set it to 200 milliseconds vibrate 100 milliseconds pause 200 milliseconds vibrate so this will work for some devices that are capable of vibrating but if we take a look at the compatibility table on mdn go down to vibrate you see that for some browsers it's not supported and sometimes it's only supported with qualifications so you might want to take a look through this table and see if there's any additional properties that you want to set on the options object you might find something useful there but probably the most important of these in most cases is body and icon now you can also add additional features to the notification you've just created by calling methods on the notification object that is created by calling new notification so that's available as a return value here and i store it under the reference of notification so a very useful one is that you can add an event listener to the notification listening out for a click so when a user clicks on the notification you can do something and typically you'd want to direct the user to a web page so you can do that by calling window.open and then passing in a url in string format so i'm going to pass in the url to my javascript block here now when i save 
and click on the notification, it takes me to that URL. Another very useful method that you can call on notification is close. So as its name suggests, it's going to close the notification on which it is called. So it doesn't really make sense to call this immediately, actually, because that will close the notification as soon as it's opened. So what you can do is to embed this inside a set timeout that will delay the running of this and set some kind of timer here in milliseconds. So I'll set it to run in five seconds. Now, if I pass that into set timeout, this makes a bit more sense. The notification will close after five seconds. Now, finally, you might be wondering about multiple notifications. So that is also possible by just simply creating another notification. So if I save this, you see we get the first notification through. And when that closes, because of the set timeout, we get the next notification. So you can do this, but be careful because multiple notifications may be an annoyance to the user. and They may decide to prevent you sending them any more notifications by changing their notification settings in the browser. So that is it for this tutorial on how to show desktop notifications to a user using JavaScript running in the browser. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.